and welcome back to the world of Dinky. I hope you are all keeping okay and keeping safe. Now in today's video, this is a really unprepared video. I just wanted to have a chat and talk a little bit about one of my health conditions. And I've spoken about it in various videos and in blog posts and stuff like that. And yeah, give you a bit of information so you can understand what I've been through in my life in relation to this condition that I have. And I have kyphoscoliosis. What is kyphoscoliosis, you ask? It's where you get more than one curve to your spine. It affects the chest. The ch chest I think I'm just making words up now. <laughs> It's the chest area, you know, that part of your skeletal frame that has its own curvature and your spine has a curvature. And for me, it makes like an S shape. I don't know if you can see, like, it's... Yeah, I've got like a big curvature there. And then I have one in the front. Down. and as a result of this culture it has kind of compressed everything inside so when I have scans and stuff it takes them a little bit longer to look at which organ is which <laughs> which is fun for me because it tests their like, experience and the patients but it's frustrating for them I guess because what you know you want it you don't really expect it i don't think and i don't think when you do go for tests and stuff that it's written you always see that you have a particular health condition that might make it difficult i don't really know what they say so i was born this way and from when i was a tiny little infant i had to wear a spinal brace and it went from oh, top of my leg, right here, around here, top of my legs, and then it went right up, and it went to here, like, it would keep my chin there. And that was to stop my spine from curving even more, and to strengthen the muscles, because I was just really weak. And I'm still I'm very weak, but everything just... I was just I was a floppy baby basically and they needed to kind of strengthen the muscle enough for me to hold my neck up and I think to help me breathe as well a little bit but as I got older they cut that they cut my neck off and it just went round the bottom of my neck <laughs> I didn't literally cut my neck off <laughs> because I would be here today <laughs> if they did that <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at what I just said. Oh god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I think I stopped wearing them when I was about 15, 14, 15. Um, I naturally used to hate wearing them because I get so hot. I had to buy bigger clothes to fit over them. I, like when I had the neck bit, I couldn't move my neck. I, <laughs> cause it's just like that. <laughs> <laughs> In some video pictures, you could just see the little rim of it, but you can't really tell cause it was skin color. It's only when I got older that I started having the patterns and the colors. Yeah, so I'd wear them every day when I was at school. I also wore four like calipers as well, but that's for another day. <laughs> so I had the four works. You know, spinal braids, four like calipers, walking frame, wheelchair, walking sticks. And then a video aid, hearing aids, page or boots. Oh god, I hate them. They were so hard and uncomfortable and hurt my feet. Anyway, I am 
going off on a tangent because they're all kind of related in a way to strengthen the muscles. So yeah, I wore these to stop my back from progressing even further. And these always send no to surgery because it's literally life or death for me and I would lose way too much blood and they wouldn't know whether it would make it worse or make it better because obviously I don't just have chymoscoliosis, I have EDS, other health conditions, asthma, hypertonia, it's, which is weak muscle tone. So they've always decided against surgery. It was just about monitoring it and protecting it from getting worse, basically. I had to have x-rays every, I think when I was like younger, it was every three months and it went to every six months. For me, I, I was like, day off school, got mine to get picked up by the ambulances and go for the day. Always have x-rays, I'd probably have a fit in if I need a new spinal brace. When I was small, they had to put me, they had to sedate me, put me to sleep because I was terrible. It used to hurt when they, they because they put a hot tight plaster cast on your skin. And obviously because I had it from right here, right up to here, it cuts my hair, it sticks to my skin, it was hot. And then when they went to cut it off, the scissors really dug in and they, obviously because they had to cut through it. I hated it, so yeah, I was really bad that they had to knock me out. To be honest with you, because as I got older, I learned that it wasn't as bad and they had new techniques. They made you wear like a big massive tubey grip bandage, pretty much, and it went, and it literally went like a dress on me. And they had these rubber, like little, what do you want to call them? Like, it was about one thick, and the scissors would go along it, so they put that under the plaster cast, and that would kind of protect you from the scissors, and cushioned it when they dug it into cut it so it got better as I got older because you go from being cold to being really really hot and then cold again I come home and I'd have plaster all over and it wasn't nice <laughs> it was itchy and ugh. now I'm an adult my back has deteriorated I'm not able to go and get it checked out properly because of the what's going on, they don't want to send me up to the hospital to get x-rays and everything done. And because I don't see the professor that I was under, no one has looked at my spine in a long time since I was about 18 years old. So anybody that I see now will, will have to dig through my file and find out what it was like back then and see what it's like now. But I've got notes like at my local hospital, my doctor's surgery, Ulverston, Manchester, Ratington, which is in Wigan. And not everything was passed through. Because nowadays it's all done by computer. Whereas back then it was all like letters and everything. And I mem do you remember me saying last year that I was having trouble with palpitations and chest and back pain? I'm still getting them, I'm struggling to breathe. Like I was before I was so short of breath. Like it yeah, it, it hurts when it happens. And I'm having it, been having a lot of problems with my back and my chest. And that's why I had to phone my doctor's surgery week before last I think it was. To get stopped up on pain relief and the inhaler and some ibuprofen which is an anti-inflammatory gel. I struggle with a lot of medications because they don't react that good to me and I get really anxious about taking strong stuff. I find they don't really work as much as mild pain relief. And I don't know why that is, but that's just how I found it. So yeah, I, I am struggling more now. And it does worry me because surgery 
I know that technology and knowledge awareness has come on so much, but I think it's still a very risky. I mean, if, if the top guy in his field wasn't prepared to do surgery, then I wouldn't trust anybody else to. So I think it's just about making it comfortable as, as it can be for me. And I just have to learn to pace myself much more. But it does worry me, it does scare me. Because what can they do? They can't stop it from getting worse. But they can't really make it better. So what the GP thinks is happening right now is that the, it, the nerves are getting affected because of them being compressed in there and that's what's making it painful. But I think, right, I'm going to go off tangent a little bit. One thing that I found the most difficult is finding clothes and having the confidence to show off my spine. You know, to go out wearing bikinis. Like last year, I posted some pictures of me wearing a bikini top, and I didn't go anywhere. I just sat at the house. And that was really, really bold for me to do that. And I've got a few bikinis in my drawer now. When we were younger, like my mum was always scared about you know people staring, people being horrible, and that you know obviously because people can be horrible, people can be cruel, and people do stare. But I know that my back is a part of me. It's taught me to be more open-minded about other people. We are more than what we see. We're all uniquely beautiful in our own ways. And I've just got that. <laughs> no, I don't want to be scared of being afraid to show my spine. If people have a problem, then that's their problem, not mine. I just. You know, we have to embrace ourselves the best that we can. And in law, laws that do have cruel things to say. I think another thing, because of my spine being distorted, as a doctor once said to me, I have one leg longer than the other. And I'm all obviously sided. <laughs> Wonky donkey, as I say. You may notice I have one shoulder higher than the other. I struggle to like move my neck, do it that way, but it's harder that way. So I prefer people to be straight on with me. Anyway, I am going to go because I don't want to ramble. If you want to learn more about hyperscoliosis, then please do let me know. And I will do some more research because people do have surgeries. A lot of them recover fine. I know people that have had surgeries that have had to have numerous surgeries, but I think there's other conditions underlining that, why the fact I've had so many and operations to correct it. Yeah, nobody has the same body, nobody. And we are all uniquely beautiful. And I want you all to remember that. Now I'm going to go. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video and maybe kind of understood a bit more about why my back is like it is. And if you haven't, please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe. It's free as always. And don't forget to click on the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. And I will see you all next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.